Hey guys, thanks for joining me today. On today's episode, we're doing a real quick video on how to preserve shives. You know those things that you buy at the store, they're all dried out in a little jar, don't taste necessarily the best? Well, you don't have to buy those at the store. You can grow your own and save them. It's real easy and real cheap. I'm going to show you how. When you're going and getting ready to preserve your shives, what you're going to want to do is cut off the plant. But you don't want to cut it off right at the soil level. You're going to want to cut it off two to three inches above, and you'll see the difference down here uh, on the plant where it's growing out of. You don't want to cut that little protective uh, skin off of the plant, but you do want to cut the shives off. So I'm going to go ahead and just cut these right off. Now I have them all bunched up in my hands so that they don't go and fall all over the place. Okay, now I have my shives. I'm going to go ahead and pick the pieces that are turning yellow and dead out of this. And then I'm going to go and arrange it on the dehydrator trays. Now I want to point out that as you're going and picking these yellow, yellow and dead pieces out of the shive plant, you want to do it while it's dry. You don't want to rinse this off first because then everything gets stuck and matted together. So this makes it a lot easier just to be able to go and pick out the, the dead pieces. Now with all the shive on the dehydrator trays, we're going to go ahead and put this cover on and we're going to run this for between 16 and 24 hours. The point of dehydrating it is to get all the moisture out so that that moisture doesn't cause mildew and rot inside the parsley. Once it's all dried out, we're going to take it, put it into the food processor, uh, puree it down into a, a finer powder, and we'll go ahead and put it in a jar. Okay, it's been 24 hours now. These shives should be just about done. Let me show you how you know when they're done. As I take apart the dehydrator and empty these shives off into a large mixing bowl, I just dump them right off the tray, right into the bowl. Now, the way to know when these shives are actually done, when you put them in, they were still supple and they would bend and move around and without breaking. You know they're done when you can take them and you bend them and they break. You want to make sure that they're, they're stiff and dry and they just break right up when you, when you squeeze them. So I'm going to go ahead and empty off the rest of this and show you the next step. Now first things first, you're going to want to take all these shives and just break them down into smaller pieces by hand in the bowl. The only reason you're doing this is because when you put them in the food processor to turn them into uh, shive powder, it's just going to make it easier to fit them into the processor. So all you're doing is just taking them and squeezing them, breaking them down. Okay. Now all of them are turned into smaller pieces, we're going to go ahead and put these into the food processor. Alright, this is the food processor that I have. It's just a little bowl. You're going to take your shives and put them into the container. I'm going to put the top on. And away we go. Now, the finer you want your shive, the, the longer you're going to do this for. Me personally, I don't like it to be super fine, so I'm only going to do it just enough to turn it into a nice shive powder. Now how I store this, I will show you. This is the, this is the shive that I had from last time. I'm going to simply take my shive powder, my chopped shives, I'm going to put it into the jar with the other. Give it a little shake so it's an even consistency through the whole jar. And that is it. I have my shive. This is a good way to do it yourself. Save a little bit of money. And have a good homegrown organic shive that you know where it came from. I don't know about you guys, but me personally, I like knowing what's in my food. I like knowing where it came from and what ingredients are in there. My body is affected by what I eat. And I want to make sure I keep my body in the best health possible. So... By, by growing my own food, I'm ensuring that I have my own organic food and I know what's in my food. So I'm able to do my own spices pretty easily with a one or two time investment of some herb plants. I have chives, I have parsley, I have garlic powder. That's all stuff that I can use to season my own food. And you know, I was wondering about that when I uh, went to buy some maple syrup a few years ago. We ran out. I went to pick the maple syrup up off the shelf, and there's nothing maple in it except for the flavoring. So that's why I decided to start making my own homemade maple syrup. Because maple syrup is, the organic maple syrup is like $10 for a little pint. And I'm thinking, man, 
I had maple trees all over my property. I could make that myself. So I did. I have some other videos on that you guys might want to check out. Hey, thanks for joining me, guys. I've had a lot of fun talking with you. I've had a lot of fun doing this. I hope to see you soon on one of my episodes. Mm -hmm.